Hi friends, today I will give you interesting insights into the underlying theoretical background concept of HTTP and some practical examples with running a web server on my PC. So if you're watching this video or browsing on YouTube, you are connected to the internet with your laptop, your tablet, your smartphone or whatsoever, like millions of people with billions of devices out there. You, or to be more precisely your web browser, is acting as a client in this case, requesting information from the other participants of the internet, the servers. So clients are requesting information while servers provide information. And, and how does this work? How can a client access an information from the server through the internet? The answer is HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. So HTTP is an application layer protocol and it defines how clients can interact with servers over the web. Its focus is on how the information gets from the server to the client, not how the client finds the correct server. That's the topic of domain name, service stuff and so on and perhaps part of one of my next videos if you're interested. So let's have a closer look on how this works. So in this case, you are on the left uh, and your browser acts as a web client. The server hosting the website is on the right. Now, if you type in www.youtube.com, you're sending a request to the server, basically asking, hey, give me what you have at this resource. The web server has a file, most probably an HTML file assigned to this resource. And based on the request, we'll encode this file, send it back to the client as response where it is decoded and rendered in the browser and hey you're seeing the web page. So let's have a quick view on the components of both the request and the response before we have a look on some real practical examples. So the request has following components. First of all a resource like www.youtube.com or www.amazon.com slash shopping cart or whatever. It has a method specifying the operation to be performed. For example, the get method informs the server that the client wants to get certain information. For example, a website behind a certain resource. For example, the website behind www.youtube.com. Post specifies that the client wants to send certain information to the server. For example, uh, a login form containing username and password information. And there are several more methods like put, head and so on, which I don't want to get into detail now. There's a version. So the HTTP protocol itself was improved over time. Uh, we focus here on version 1.1. Um, additionally, the client can send headers to the server, which allows it to pass additional information about the request or about the client itself. For example, the user agent specified which kind of browser or application the client is using. And last but not least, a body in which further information can be passed to the server, like for example in the postal request, the username or password. So then let's have a closer look to the response. So the response contains of a status code, basically which specified the result of the operation. For example, 200 means OK, 201 means created, 202 means accepted. So there are several status codes, for example, you know 404 not found if you, for example, enter a resource with, which doesn't exist or you get a 401, which means unauthorized. For example, you're trying to um, request an information for which you don't have access or 500 is very prominent where something on the server side went wrong. So an internal server errors and many more. So we will have, have a look on some of them later on in the practical examples. The response also gives back headers to the client. For example, a content language which defines in which language the content is provided to the client. Or content encoding, like in which format is the content actually encoded. And several, several more. And of course, a body in which the content itself is being passed back to the client. As promised, let's have a look at some examples. So I started a server, a web server with Python Flask. It's running at this resource here. And behind the scenes, I created several routes or several addresses or resources here on the server side. We start with a start um, route, then an index and one, two, three. 
and we'll have a look on the requests and responses for each of them. So let's start with a start. Let's go to a random browser like Chrome here and let's go to our start resource. And after you typed in the URL and hit enter, you see the, the response already. In this case, hello client, this content is served to you by the server. So actually the browser took care of sending out the HTTP request and receiving the HTTP response and also rendering it on the screen. But what, what happens in the background? Basically on Chrome, we can make use of the develop tools um, to have a look at this. So if you go to the network tab to all and simply refresh a page, you see, okay, here, here something happened. So basically an HTTP request was made here to this address and with the status 200 OK. And if you click on it, you see further details. So uh, remember the presentation some minutes ago, we talked about the request, which needs a resource here, the URL, a method get, this is already the status code from the response 200 OK. And also some response headers we got like the content length, the content type text HTML, also some further information about the server, the date and about the server itself. We also get a summary of the request headers Chrome has sent as a client to the server. So which content types he actually accepts. And fortunately, Chrome accepts, uh, accepts text HTML because this was the content which was provided by the server. But there are more interesting and insightful information like an uh, accept encoding, which encoding types does my browser accept, which languages and so on. And very prominent, which user agent basically. Uh, so Chrome sends to the server um, the user agent. So some information about the browser itself, which a server can then, then use to perhaps style a sub page differently if someone is calling the page from Chrome, making some headline in blue color if someone is calling from Internet Explorer and stuff like this is possible because the server knows about this user agent and can make use of it. So for example, this would be our second route. If we go to the index route and let's close this for a while, we see here, hello client. I know you are using Mozilla, blah, 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 Chrome and the Chrome version. Yeah, if you do the same request from, for example, Firefox, it looks different. So hello client, I know you're using Firefox 76. Let's do it from Edge. Hello client, I know you're using Edge 18 something. And uh, perhaps you know Postman, so a tool where you can fire up um, HTTP requests and see the responses. Um, basically here, <laughs> okay, it's not rendered, Postman gets the response uh, still uh, still encoded, but it's, it's here on the agent which is used here is Postman Runtime. So actually the server can make use of the, so to say, background information your browser sends. Perhaps let's uh, stick to Postman for a while and have a look at the next call. So if we call the one endpoint with a get method, we are getting an error here. Status code 405 method not allowed. So basically the HTTP response informs us something went wrong. There's an error here. And basically the reason for this is in this case here, as you can see the address for one, the server will only allow, allow the method post. Yeah. So this is an example on how things can go wrong. Um, if you send a post method to, to this endpoint, you get the response, which is defined here. So this was just an example on um, a 405 error. There are different ones, like for example, sending a request to this one, you would get a 404 not found because basically this resource is not specified at all. There are different types of errors, like for example, if you call the second endpoint, um, and again now here in this case a post is not not allowed. So if you go to a get call to this endpoint, um, 
you're getting 500 internal server error. So something on the server side went wrong in this case. And basically you're getting also in this case some error information. Um, and if you look on the server side, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to make a typecasting of a string high to integer. And of course this doesn't work and this will throw an error on the server side. So um, basically, yeah, um, the server is not well programmed in this case. And then the client doesn't get any response or, or any valid response. Yeah, it gets a response, but with a status code 500 internal server error. So one thing on the request we haven't considered so far is uh, the body. So we can not only specify a method and a resource and some headers, we can all also specify certain things in the body. And most in most cases it's used, for example, for post requests, for example, to provide a username like code and dogs and perhaps a password, my password to the server. And in this case, let's see, let's call the route three with a post request and forward this information in the body. And um, in this case, the server just responds uh, with uh, 200 OK. And you just posted uh, the username code and docs and the password, my password. Um, in, in reality, the server, of course, will use this information to, for example, log you in um, and not to, to put it back to you here. Um, but this, this is just one example. So um, I think we went through all the examples I had in mind. I hope with especially the examples, but also with the theoretical background, I could help you in understanding HTTP. So basically in what is happening in your browser behind the scenes. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.